It's good to see everybody. You know, I can't help but feel, what's going on with everybody this morning? Is everybody tired this morning? Everybody just kind of seems to be tired this morning. Whatever. Michelle and I got an opportunity last night. We got to go to Claremore. There was a working ranch rodeo uh, down in Claremore at the Expo Center there. We got to go out last night. And first time that we've actually had the time in a long time for just the two of us to be able to go out and do something. We stayed out till 9.30 last night. <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> oh, that's getting older as something, isn't it? Amen. Yeah. That, that recliner looks better and better all the time, all the time. This morning, I'm going to share a message with us. I'm probably, uh, I'm pretty sure that a good many uh, pastors are sharing with, uh, with churches because it's pretty much traditional that we talk about uh, the road to uh, Emmaus. And uh, that I know there's all kinds of ways to approach this. And this morning, what I want to do is I want to approach it, uh, it kind of in probably a uh, what would normally be a, a non-traditional way, but I think it's a very good way to try to approach it. Uh, maybe just something for us to think about. So if you have your Bibles, you would like to follow along, got your iPads, got your phones, got your Bible in your phone, uh, let's go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Starting at verse 13. Luke chapter 24, verse 13. Jesus has been crucified. He has been put in the tomb. He has now risen. And we come to this place and to this point, we come to this story... Uh, there is rumor beginning to really circulate and really to go around that the ladies had gone and the disciples had gone to the tomb and the tomb was empty. And as you can imagine, as you could wonder, probably everything that's happening, everything that's going on, uh, people are saying, well, somebody stole the body. The disciples come and got him. They moved him. Something happened. I mean, you can just imagine all the different things. We learned, we know from last week that Mary saw Jesus and when she saw Jesus, she spoke with Jesus. And after she spoke with Jesus, she goes and she tells the disciples all about what she had seen and what she had heard. And this is where we pick up the story here. We, we find a story of two disciples, two people who had followed Jesus, going back to Emmaus. So starting at verse, 10, verse 13, it says, That very day... Two of them were going to the village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were walking with each other and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. For him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these, th in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him, from being or delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him there. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and they did not, and they did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had seen a, a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with him went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart, to believe the, all the things that, to, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. 
Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went to stay with them. And he was at the table with them, and he took the bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened up to us the scriptures? And they rose the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Two disciples who have seen Jesus, two disciples who had heard him teach, two people who were there while all the events had been taking place. No doubt, maybe they had even seen Jesus hanging on the cross. Uh, they, they knew that Jesus had been placed in a tomb. Now here they are, are on their way. They're, they're walking, they're talking to each other, and you can just imagine uh, their conversation. Uh, it, the average person can walk seven miles in about three hours if they're in an average pace. I looked that up this morning. I used to could run three miles, and I've done it in 18 minutes and like 10 or 15 seconds one time when I was in the Marine Corps. It takes the average person about three hours to walk seven miles. Did I, did, now, wait a minute. Did, did I just tell a story? <laughs> did I tell a big windy? Did I make it seem like I ran seven miles in three? In, did I, is that how I done that? Well, let me correct that. I done three miles, <laughs> okay, in that amount of time. I didn't, I didn't do seven miles in that amount of time, okay? Y'all are a tough crowd this morning. Y'all need to wake up. Man, I'm up here sweating, and y'all are sitting out there just kind of. Takes the average person to walk seven miles uh, somewhere around three hours. Some can do a little faster. Some might do it a little slower. So they had plenty of time to be talking with each other. We read the story, and as they're walking along, they're discussing, and they're talking about uh, some things that had happened. They knew Jesus was, was, uh, had died. They knew that he was buried in the tomb. Now they're hearing stories he's not in the tomb anymore. He's heard stories that some of the ladies and some of the disciples have gone, and they know that Jesus is not there. So they are really kind of having this conversation as they go along. All of a sudden, Jesus just kind of, I guess, just kind of walks up out of nowhere, and he joins the conversation. And he starts to ask them, what in the world are you talking about? And, of course, they look at him and said, man, are you? He said, where you been? Yeah, haven't you heard all of this other stuff? And so they start talking about Jesus and telling, telling them about Jesus and who Jesus is. And as the story goes, Jesus begins to reveal to them and show them what, it, what had actually taken place. And, and wouldn't it have been interesting to have been in that conversation because it says he went from Moses up until today, talking about him and how the scriptures are revealing who he is. That would have been a great conversation to be a part of. He reveals these things. He shows these things. He talks about these things to these guys. And as it goes, they go home to eat. He goes to sit with them. When he takes the bread and he breaks the bread as he had done, which tells me they had to be aware they had to kind of know what had taken place. Either in conversation someone had said, or he, they might have even been there when he done this. When he broke that bread, it says their eyes were opened and they recognized and understood who he is. And then all of a sudden it says, the scripture says, he just simply disappeared from their sight. Now they're excited. Now they've got to, you know, they're, they're, can you just imagine having sat there? Can you just imagine having heard his teaching? I mean, my goodness, he rolled up 
in, in the time it took to get from Emmaus, to, to, uh, from Jerusalem to Emmaus, he rolled up and put in from Moses to this day. And these guys got to hear that teaching. They get so excited after they recognize and understand that they make their way back. We know the day's late, so it must have, it must have been that, that it, maybe even in the dark they had to make their way back, which probably was not always the smartest thing to do, especially in roads in the outer cities, because there were thieves, people who liked to knock you in the head and take what you have. They made their way back, and they told everybody who supposedly gathered and I would think, and I, it doesn't say it in the Bible, but in the gathering place that they were, more than likely, the same upper room that we hear about, and sp that we speak of. And they tell them everything that they have seen and everything that they have heard. What an amazing journey. I want to try this morning to help us quickly to see three things. Every single one of us, quite obviously, are alive, right? And every single one of us are quite obviously sitting here listening and we're breathing in oxygen and we're letting out carbon dioxide, right? That means that every single one of us are alive. It also means that every single one of us are on this journey we call life. It's pretty amazing at how God has set things up. It's pretty amazing at how he has put things into process. Uh, if you just stop and you just think about what it takes for, for a person to even come into this world, how beautiful it is. From the time of conception to the time of birth and then to, to watch as, as a child begins to to grow and, and to learn things. And, and Shell and I are really and truly getting to enjoy some some, some very special times because Anna Dean is, is really beginning to pick things up and getting very smart about some things. Um, she's even old enough to have told her grandmother, chill out, the other night. Uh, she said, just chill out. So uh, grandmother was trying to get her to take a bath, and she says, okay, okay, just chill out. I don't know how it went after that, but uh, she did get a bath. <laughs> Uh, to, to watch Presley Joe now being able to really set up and trying her best to crawl and to reach for things and, and grab things and recognizing things. And, and she has just almost got pawpaw down really good. You can go pawpaw and she'll go pop, 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 pop. <laughs> So she's about to get there. We share this thing called life together. We grow up. We grow older. We experience life, and in our lives, we experience all kinds of things. Uh, there are great things that we experience in life. There are some very serious and some very hard things that we experience in life. All of these things are working together and coming together to be able to teach us and to show us, and it's pretty amazing at how God can take those things and he can put those things together. And as we go through life, as we live life, he can take those experiences. And if we will pay attention, and if we will listen, and if we will learn from, he will take the messes of our life and he will turn them into the message of our life. Amen? Amen. So when we look at this, every single one of us is in this, this journey. We're on this journey. What it is, every single one of us share in this journey. The person sitting next to you is on a journey. Their life is a journey. It may not always be just like yours. It may not look like yours, but their life is their life, and they are on their journey. And God is showing us, and he is teaching us in this journey. So, brothers and sisters, much like what we talked about a while ago, and we talked about how nice it is and how good it is that we can walk into the doors here of this building and that we can see people, and we can see people hugging each other, we can see people talking to each other, we can see handshakes being given out, uh, just all kinds of things being shared, how great it is that we can come together collectively. But guess what? Not one single person is on the very same journey that you are on. Not even husbands and wives. They have to walk their journey. 
Husbands, wives, even though living together and even though sharing so many things together are still on their own, own personal journey with the Lord. But what is so amazing about that is that we get to share this journey together. We get to come together and have and, and to have collectively to be able to share our journey with each other. Last week I spoke a, a little bit and, and things, and, and, and I believe it with all of my heart. People ask me all the time, do I, do I ha really have to go to church? Do I really need to go to church? And my answer is yes. Yes, we need to go to church. People will ask me, well, do I have to go to church to go to heaven? I say, I don't know. I don't make that call. I don't, I don't get to make that call. I can tell you this, is that those who are involved in a church family can, can face life in so many different ways and so many better ways because they've got people that they can rely on, they can come to, and can be supportive of. So it is important that we are a part of a church family. It is important that we, that we know that we can be a part of, that we can do things together and, and work through things together, that we can have conversation with each other. Yes, it's important. It's very important that we come together. It is important that we have friends who are Christians. A lot of times people will come to me and they'll say some things and stuff and they'll say things like, well, I can't associate with so-and-so or that person or this person or whatever and that sort of thing because they do this. Well, I, I want to tell you, I think sometimes what we do as Christians and we, kind of, we can't isolate ourselves sometimes and we can say, you know, I don't need to do it. We don't need to do what they do. We don't need to act like they act. We don't need to be involved in what they're involved in, but we can't associate with them. How else are they going to know what it means to be a Christian if Christians don't associate with them. So it's important for us to share our faith in the way that we live. We don't necessarily always have to go open our mouths and, and, and say certain things and do certain things, but we can show our life, amen? We can live our life and they can see that. And they can see that, 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 they're on a, that they can learn and realize that they're on a journey also. And hopefully what happens at some point, sometime, the Holy Spirit works in their life that they recognize and understand, I can have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life too. And this journey becomes better. I didn't say perfect. And I didn't say always easy. I did say it becomes better. Amen. But that's because we know and understand we've got each other, we need each other, we have each other to be able to rely on. So we share this journey together. Every time we come together as a church family, we're sharing our journey together. Much like when Jesus joined these two disciples and they were able to have conversation, they were able to talk. Verse, verse 13 says that very day two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went out with them. Here is the most amazing thing. Think about this just for a second. In your journey, which nobody else is on, only you, Jesus is there too. But guess what? The person sitting next to you, he's with them too. He's walking, he's guiding, and he's directing in their life. It's pretty amazing at how God works sometimes. Amen? The second thing that I think we can learn is that the journey is what we learn from. As we are, are living in this life and we're going through these things, one of the things, and I know I've, I've said so many things so many times that in the Marine Corps they used to tell us, make a mistake, okay, just don't make the same mistake twice, right? In other words, what, it, what they're telling us is learn from what happened. And brothers and sisters, as we go through life, how many of us have made mistakes? How many of us have made decisions that maybe we'd wish, well, well shouldn't, I should have done something different, should have. But the, the thing... 
is what happens is we need to learn from the mistakes that we make. And when we take the time to look at and allow those things to teach us, it will guide us the next time around we come close to the same circumstances. We, we don't want to make those same mistakes twice. We don't want to go through the same things over and over and over again. So it's important for us to learn as we go along. As, we, as, things, get, as things happen, as things, as things go along, we learn what to do, and we also learn what not to do. We, we learn the good things that, that, that are, are, are good for us, and we can learn the bad things that are bad for us. So it's important for us to recognize and understand in this journey, we're in a learning process. Guess what that's called? That's discipleship. That, that's learning about life. That's, a, that's learning to be a disciple. As we go through life, as we learn in life, and what, what the Lord reveals to us, what the Holy Spirit reveals to us in our life, what he's doing is he's teaching, he's showing, hey, this is good, this is not. Go this way, don't go that way. So it, we're all in a learning process. We're all in a process of learning certain things. And the greatest thing about this and the greatest thing about the book that we have is it's fresh and new. It can reveal and show things to us when we're 12, when we're 30, or when we're 98. The, the greatest picture that I have of my grandmother here she is. She died at 98 years of age. This picture was probably taken a couple of years before that. But one of the greatest pictures I have of my grandmother is her sitting in her chair. She's got her feet up in the stool in front of her. She's got her Bible wide open in her lap. She's been reading her Bible. Now, in 98 years, I'm pretty sure she's probably read that thing through several times. But one of the things she would always tell me, she'd say, I read something today I didn't realize. I read something today and I didn't realize. She still had questions. She still wanted to learn. She still had a desire for the knowledge of the Bible, to know more about Jesus, to learn more. Brothers and sisters, that's what's happening to us. And I, I hope that what happens is, is the desire that we have in our heart grows and grows and grows to have more knowledge of who Jesus is and how he does things in our life, the things he can do for us in our life. Verse 25 uh, of Luke 24 says, And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. All of these things he taught and he showed them what a journey that was. What a journey it was that he would be able to take from Moses till now and show himself to them. And brothers and sisters, for us and the journey that we're on, us too. Christ is wanting to reveal himself to us every single day. There are things for us to pick up and there are things for us to learn every single day. If what we'll do is take the time to look, listen, learn. Notice I didn't say talk. A lot of times talking gets you in trouble. A while ago, I was, to I was walking along and I was talking and I kind of got caught up in conversation and everything was rocking along. Guess what I forgot? My Bible. Johnny caught me back there. He said, he said what did you do? I said, I said, I had to go get my Bible. He said, you forgot your Bible? I was like, yeah, I forgot my Bible. I got to talking too much. If we look, watch, Listen, pray, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. We can learn in this journey. The last thing that I have this morning, the journey reveals Jesus Christ at work in us, for us, and through us. 
the journey reveals Jesus Christ at work in us, for us, and through us. Brothers and sisters, when we take a step back and we watch and we look around and we see what's happening to us, in, in, my, in my walk with the Lord, the things that I see, the things that I, I, I go through, I, I, Michelle and I will look at each other and we'll say, that's a God wink. That's God at work. That's God showing something. That's God revealing something there. He's, he's, he's giving something to us there. He's allowing us to experience uh, something fresh and new. So Christ is always at work. His Holy Spirit is always at work in us. But it's, it's interesting that he's not just at work in us, he's at work for us. But also then as he's at work for us, he's at work through us. So we, we find that he's in us, he's, we find that he's for us, and he, we find that he wants to take his word, his will through us. Isn't it amazing? I mean, really and truly, isn't it amazing that the Lord would see me and want to work through me? Isn't it amazing that he would want to use my mouth, my ears, my hands, my feet? Isn't it amazing that he wants to work through us? Isn't it amazing that he wants us to use our mouth, our hands, our feet to work through us? It just simply amazes me that Christ being Christ and being who he is and our celebrating what we just went through with Resurrection Sunday to, to look and to see that his design could have been anything in the universe. And yet he chooses to use us as individuals, us collectively to do his work. That is amazing. Brothers and sisters, what an honor. What an honor it is that the Christ would look down upon any one of us and he would say, I want to work through you today. I want to accomplish this through you today. And no matter what it is and no matter how simple it is, brothers and sisters, I, I want to tell you there is, there is absolutely nothing too simple. When, when it comes to sharing God's word, when it comes to being, being to live out his word, and, and I, mean, I, I mean, I said that word deliberately, live out his word. When it comes to living out his word, no act is too simple. Nothing is too simple because the simplest things and sometimes the smallest things are the things that people see and will notice and they will, they will look at and they will wonder about. And it causes them to think. That creates the opening for the Holy Spirit. Now, Tracy wouldn't want me to say this to you this morning, but this morning I went to the grocery store, as I always do. I was getting our stuff that we do for our fruity water and all the stuff back that we have back there. Well, Tracy was coming up behind me this morning, and apparently he was at the grocery store not too long ago. And someone, I guess, must have been, I don't know if they were either in front of him or behind him. I don't, I don't know which it was. But it ended up that somehow or another they were short and couldn't afford or didn't have enough money. And Tracy paid for their stuff. Nothing said more. Just simply paid for it. But it was noticed. Because as he came through the line this morning, he was kind of back behind me. As he came through the line this morning, management noticed what he had done. And they were telling him, as he got up there to buy his stuff, that we're not charging you for this or we're giving you your money back from the last time that you, that you bought for these people. 
The management of our grocery store saw the act and wanted to repay. Now, Tracy was being hard-headed and saying, no, you're not going to do that. And then that, he was just simply being Tracy. He didn't. And really and truly, if he fusses at me today after service for acknowledging what he's done and sharing that story with you without getting his permission, then, I mean, he's justified in doing so. So if, he, if I go out, if he takes me out back and I come back with a black eye, think nothing of it, okay? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, sometimes the very simplest act makes all the difference in the world in one person's life. And something that I haven't said in many years or in a long, long time, how much is one soul worth? How much is one person's soul worth? Christ thought it was worth him coming and dying on a cross. So, brothers and sisters, we're on a journey. We're getting to walk this journey together. We're getting to live this journey together. We need to recognize and understand this, this is, we are to do this together. It's exciting that we get to do this together, that we get to be a church family together, that we get to have an effect on the community around us together. Because everybody's on a journey. And this morning, someone's journey is not very good. Someone's journey has got them caught up in all kinds of things that they probably really and truly don't want to be caught up in, but it's got so much control of their life now. It's just life as they know it. The answer to that is Jesus Christ. Let me stop and think. Remember where I was. Remember where you were. What was going on in your life? What were the events and circumstances of your life when Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, got your attention and you decided, I need Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life? There's a town full of people out there who still need to hear that message and still need to know that message. We're on this journey together. Finally, verse 30 when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road. And now he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Brothers and sisters, let, let me ask a question. How long has it been since the word of God has burned in your heart? How long has it been since something has happened to you and you want to say, I've got to share this. I've got to live it out. I've got to, I've got to let somebody know about this. Brothers and sisters, that's today. It's today. Our sitting here, our being together, our sitting with each other, our sharing with each other, our hugging each other, shaking hands, breaking bread with each other, that is today. And it ought to make our hearts burn with thankfulness and with willingness to take this gospel message, what Christ has done for us, into the world around us. Amen? Amen. Let our hearts burn. Let's have a desire for Jesus Christ and a desire to share that with anybody and everybody. Let's let, uh, to let our lives be lived out that when people see and when people watch, they'll know and they'll recognize how much is one soul worth? Jesus is life. Who said that? Jesus is life. Amen.
Bow your heads with me if you would, please. Dear Heavenly Father, today, we thank you. We thank you that sometimes in the simplest stories that we seem to hear, there's, there's message in that. Lord, we're thankful that we're on a journey. Lord, we're thankful that you are at the head of our journey. Lord, we're thankful that we're on this journey together. So, Lord, bring us together. Bond us together. Bind us together. As our iron sharpens iron, Lord, let us, let us be here for each other. Let us help each other, guide each other, direct each other as we move down this, this journey of life together. So, Lord, guide us and direct us. Help us to recognize and to see that. Help us to look at the small things even and to allow the small things to work in, in order to help change someone's life. So Lord, go with us now. Give us a good afternoon as we go about all of our activities this afternoon and bring us together once again that we might be able to join together again as a church family to worship you. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.